Good evening and welcome to Problem of Being Awake. My name is Ben, I'll be your host. And tonight's subject is Are protesters, that angry young mob of people who are essentially protesting their own existence, they haven't worked that one out, they're not psychology, so psychologically or philosophically trained in any other way. Um, so this is a more long form discussion where I get to go over how it started, what it's doing now, the strange evolution of, of, of the protests from the first one, which was sadly on the day of the Hamas attack. There was an anti-Israel, pro, it was a pro-Palestine um, protest before Israel had even struck back. So there was a lot of people, I believe, conditioned, and I, I, when I say that, I mean by embedded learning, that, that something would turn them on and turn them anti-Semitic, because there was no levels of anti-Semitism that warranted any particular microscope in academia. Now, all of a sudden, every single major institute in the Western world has been impregnated with this horrible idea of anti-Semitism, and it's... It's been funded, uh, the top five funders to the universities of the Western world, I'm not talking about every university, but the main ones, the top ones for, sh for sure. They rank Qatar, the UAE, of which Qatar is a part, but it spent so many and tens of billions more. It's its own entity. China, you'd think they'd be first, they're third. Um, Saudi Arabia, fourth. And don't, don't trust them. You know, they've got too many, 195 crown princes or whatever they're, they're all dispensable no one knows who's really running the place and no one's ever going to meet them so stay clear of them next to them iran now we'll see problems with donald trump recently in iran we'll see what happens there but that's what's been fueling our kids education and after lockdown wokeness went on steroids you know, it was so easy for them to roll through society with these surreal and completely out of touch with reality beliefs. And us have to um, almost, well, ag initially agree with them and are trying to appease them and then get cancelled them by them and attacked by them. Uh, and then learn that they're not of any importance and facts don't care about your feelings and that a man is a per person who was born with a penis no matter what happens to that man that's still a man a woman is a person who's born with a vagina no matter what happens to that woman they're still a woman um you know these very basic things of common sense which we've never thought to question there is a rare uh, mental health disorder called gender dysphoria it was declassified as a mental health disorder in 2019, at which point it affected 0.004% of people. That's the highest estimate. Five years later, I think we can all agree that 1% at least of the Western world is now considering themselves to be trans. That's not physically or scientifically possible. That can only be because they were either taught and ingrained gender theory, gender studies, and CRT for racism and hatred, which is a big part of this protest group as well. But, you know, they were they were taught gender dysphoria. They had it installed in them. Not, it, it could not have occurred naturally because it wouldn't, 35 years of study wouldn't suddenly be blown out of the water when you, if you declassified it, you would expect no uprising in cases there was no reason to declassify it and there was a massive uptick in cases so that the mental health guidelines suggest you then reclassify it um they didn't instead it propagated a world that ended up coming up with such wonderful things as puberty blockers which sterilized children and and double mastectomies and the plasties that go on to to change themselves into something that, that somebody has convinced them they want to be and it may be it may be the internet it may be friends it may be peer pressure but it's very very rarely actually feeling like they're in the wrong body that figure is slept 0.004 percent that has not risen it cannot rise um otherwise we would have seen a literally a litany of unexplained teen suicides like we wouldn't believe so um and on the trans thing suicidality rate highest at its 
after two years after successful surgery. Not before. So anyone who says that there's, there's a risk of suicide is lying because they know that. It was, uh, they, they're lying or misinformed. Because every, it, it, factually, it is two years after successful um, surgery and the surgery is successful 50% of the time. One in every two trans surgeries has to be redone. One in, one in 14 is the minimum you would expect for a ne uh, necessary medical operation and here we've got one in two chance for an elective child butchery operation um the wpath leaked files showed them all to be corrupt lying about their credentials and one of them had a fetish for uh, castrating young boys he was allowed to practice that fetish and advised gender clinics around the western world the NHS took all their advice from WPATH that all American gender clinics, most of European gender clinics, WPATH was seen as the professionals, the World Professional Association of Transgender Health, until they weren't. Until they were dismissed as actually not having their qualifications, but the damage was done. But coming back now, that's the reason I say that is because the makeup of the protest group has a very high amount of LGBT, and I, I emphasize the T because it's much more the T side of it, inside it, the protest group. Now there's this problem with the young and the way they've been taught, as I said, it's been influenced by foreign money and propagated by Marxist ultra left wing professors and, and agreed to by our governments, which have both been caught to be corrupt. Um, as hell so you know honestly we can't trust anything the government says now i mean it's it's all that cards are out on the table they've been lying to us for decades um so the protest has sprung from a hatred and that's why i say crt is very important because it teaches racial division it also brings in later on the intersectional victimhood theory. He's more oppressed, and it's it's a chart, it's a Zen a Venn diagram. You can spin it all you like. You'll always find oppression. You'll always be a victim in that. And the mentality that victimhood is the right way to go through life, and being oppressed is the right way to go through life. Therefore, you're morally superior for just getting out of bed in the day because you're a part of an oppressed, marginalised group. But your chances of success in life are as, as as real as your chances of seeing reality because that's not how the world works. And now Gen Z are entering the workforce. They're getting sacked in record numbers. They think they get mental health days. They get, you know, fuck off Fridays was one of them I've heard. Um, work less Wednesdays, all all a load of crap from these youngsters because they don't know what they're talking about. They the biggest problem with Generation Z, and it's huge, is that they were the first generation of children to be not to be taught how to think, but to be taught what to think. And the woke ideology and everything that comes of it talks of tolerance and inclusion and diversity, but only if you're part of this, the minority groups, it deems worthy. If you're outside of that, you're welcome to no tolerance. Absolutely no, no tolerance whatsoever. They're, they are the least tolerant people on the planet. Antifa uh, claim to be anti-fascist and anti-racist, yet every single action they've taken has been both racist and fascist. It, it beggars belief, but that's how nuts these guys have got. And, you know, I'm going to say two things. So how the world has, and this, this whole the trans issue and the protest issue, I've really risen to insanity. Okay, on the protest issue, this year we had Veterans Day. They, the, the college protesters mourned, mourned it as Martyrs Day. So they mourned the terrorists of Hamas and Hezbollah instead of the veterans that gave them the freedom that allows them to breathe on college campuses with high class or middle class parents and no real major concerns and very, very privileged people who invented white privilege and started talking about it and saying everyone's implicitly or unconsciously racist as a psychologist. That's impossible. Your deep desires come to your forefront in your mind all the time. That's the job of the subconscious. So if you were racist, you would have acted on it and said racist things. So you can't call anyone racist unless you know them well enough. 
Um, racism is an internally held belief, but that's not what's been taught. What's been taught is it's a systemic thing. But racism can't belong to a thing. An object, a system, uh, a song. Well, a song's different. A piece of music, played music, but that can't be racist. But they still make it racist. Everything's about race. Inanimate objects, statues, cannot be racist. They may symbolise a time in history where slavery was prevalent. But guess what? That dates back to 4,500 years ago in the Mesopotamian Empire and only ended in the Atlantic slave trade when the English ended the slave trade. Um, up, up, and even now today, there are 50 million people enslaved in Africa, Asia and um and the Middle East, 50 million. So more than was ever enslaved by black men in America, that's 12.5, 50 million active slaves today. Uh, and no one picks up that cause. And you notice that the protesters, they don't pick up their cause. They're, they're very comfortable with their protests, but try and get them to actually do something that's more constructive than just whine and shout and scream and screech. God, they're loud sometimes. Find find something that is more hands-on that you can do, because, frankly, if you got into a reasonable university, you must have some level of basic intelligence that lets you know that protesting for free Palestine, freeing Palestine is the stupidest idea in the world because there's never been a Palestine. And if somebody tells you there was a Palestinian in the third century, that was in Syria. The P Palestinian people, or Philistine, as they're known in Arabic, which is the, our word for Philistine, have been nomadic tribes for, since the beginning of Muhammad. And Judea is, is exactly where Israel was now, built by King David a thousand years before Muhammad was born. So it can't be an apartheid land. That exact piece of land was built by Judea and occupied by Jews a thousand years before Islam was a religion. Uh, Muslim people were uh, running the, running their part of the world. So no way. Sorry, not happening. Um, but so it's gone pro Hamas, pro Hezbollah, pro Iran. Jesus Christ, you want nuclear war with Iran? You and death death to America. And certainly, I mean, they don't say so, but death to England, and the, you know, the Islamist, and the difference between an Islamist and a Muslim is that there's a line that says that this is the only way, it's the only religion, and um, you have to, um, you, everyone needs to be converted. Your average moderate Muslim will look at that and go, well, realistically, not everyone. But it would be great if more people came to the faith. And then your Islamist, who's more radicalised, looks at that one and goes, well, that means either convert or kill. And that's where you get that radical Islamic terrorist threat, which we have in our countries, which we have in our young people now, because we have so much immigration from uh, the whole of whole of the Islamic world in, into Britain and, and parts of Europe, and it's absolutely a breaking point. The tensions are palpable. There will be a death in a, one of these riots soon. And I don't call these protests protests because the protests used to mean something and they were peaceful. But this, these, they don't start out peaceful. And the Washington DC one last year, they started out the protest by throwing at things at the police. That was the start of the protest. They didn't march and chant first. First, they engaged in combat. And, and, they, and they fight like rabid dogs. And it's because they've been brainwashed. Been brainwashed by their educators to believe that everything about America or England and the English Empire or the Roman Empire or the Enlightenment or the Renaissance is all some sort of patriarchal um, problem, uh, which, uh, you know, with, co with colonialism. Now, I, I can tell you there's countries that the British colonised who would beg never to leave the British Empire. And India is one that regrets leaving the British Empire, but we did leave them with a world-class education system. And three out of the top five tech universities in the world are now in India. So... Don't think that you know everything about history. That's one thing for the protesters to know. 
They're, they're, I think when they get to the stage where they're just spitting vile and tap, like, you know, sort of spray painting faces of terrorists on monuments and they're saying pro Hamas, they're burning an American flag saying death to America. I'm going to ask them to pause and say, who is it that you really hate? And the answer will always be themselves. That's not the answer you'll get. Because how much hatred, how much further can they take their hatred without acting upon it? Really, if you look at the, the absolute brainwashed way in which these predominantly white middle class young teen teenagers and young adults are just marching ahead in this insanity, taking a step away from reality with each step. Uh, there has to be a reckoning, and, and there has been in Britain recently, you know, and that, unfortunately, if you are part of that group, you're part of a losing side, because 85, 90% of all societies don't approve of anything you're doing, and there's a lot of us who, if you had to meet us, like, one on ten, you'd be scared. So it's not a good idea to push society too far especially for something you can't control. Better than Netanyahu, and especially now when Israel are, their casualty rates, civilian casualty rates are so bloody low and their expert intelligence was so bloody good. They took out the whole of Hezbollah, the entire command structure. Yahya Sinwar, they, they literally stripped Hamas and they destroyed Israel's air defence. Every They're doing brilliantly. And Benjamin Netanyahu should finish that war. And the Gazan people do need to be de-radicalised because Israel is not prepared to have them on the border if they're not. And they're quite right, because even before October the 7th, they were very pro-Hamas. After October the 7th, on October the 8th, 70 plus, I think 78%, for it was an act of, not an act of terrorism. So that's a very diff difficult bunch of people. I understand it's horrible that, that so many of them have had to die, but it's in terms of urban warfare, warfare, it's actually a fantastic military record by Israel, but it's, it's all horrible. All dead, dead innocent people are horrible. But, you know, it's for them to just let them come back into Gaza by God, they'd be supplied with Iran, named a new terrorist group within a week. However, Egypt and Jordan are thinking of taking control, you know, so they, they're they then run by another Muslim country. And they've agreed to the idea they need to be de-radicalised because they are a very radical bunch of people. Um, now, this is, this is all, you know, people would say, they'll claim it's false narrative because anything that doesn't support their facts is false narrative. And that's the young, really, they, they, they want everything immediately. This sense of urgency in protests, this sense of urgency in, in you know, oh, the climate change, guys. Oh, Christ, Jesus, just stop oil, just stop, please. Because we need oil to get renewable energy. We need a lot more of it. Loads of it is under America, re about to be drilled up. But we need it to get to renewable energy, of which the best source by far is nuclear. But it's unpopular because of the nuclear bomb idea. But a reactor now is not anywhere near unstable. They're all stable. Um, but if you want wind and solar, that requires electricity to power it. That requires the use of LNG and oil. So stop protesting something that is is offering you the opportunity to get what you want in the long term. And don't ruin people's days by like, when they're going to the theatre. That's just a nasty thing to do. And don't lie down in the bloody road because that's really inconvenient. If that were me, I would open up one lane on either side and have the speed limit at 70 miles an hour. And you can see how much they like it then when they're stuck there by glue. Honestly, some of these protesters are out of their bloody minds. And they've, they've been pushed. You know, Greta Thunberg with all of her four... Uh, fear-mongering look up michael schellenberger's work on climate and you'll find a very significantly good bit of information which is that we've been improving and delivering better on our climate agenda over the last 10 years so all of the panic and all of the it's all rubbish there's no indication that in the next 10,000 years the planet is at risk and there's no chance that anyone watching this 
um, is going to die from climate change. No chance whatsoever. So the panic is too much. But honestly, the, these kids are wrapped up ideologues and they actually support each other's causes. So they, they, they group protests, and this happens a lot. Intersectionality is, is a part of it because they think one, vic one victim, all victim. All victims must support all victims in all protests. And, you know, uh, there, there was somebody who, who was at the Free Palestine protest and said, oh, why are you here? Because, well, I'm, I'm uh, just a poor. So I think it's important that all, all minorities... Uh, protest with all other minorities about all minority causes well what's that called then that's not a protest that's just that we don't like life and it comes back we hate ourselves and we don't know what to do about it it'd be lovely if they were honest and they said that because there is a way back for them if they want to come back but if they intend to make the world weirder they intend to trans more people they intend to turn you know every everyone else conservative absolutely because they can't handle this left far left lunacy hollywood's cut, trying to come back from it um the mainstream media in the us cnn's up for sale msnbc's up for sale nobody bought it the whole us referendum was the referendum on woke and woke lost and therefore these little protest rats who think that they're invincible when they're in groups, but would cower in the face of real strength. Make like people's lives miserable. To advance a cause they don't either understand or fully believe, and if they do understand and fully believe, that would make them very evil, twisted, hateful people. But I do like to con condole and console myself with the idea that they are temporarily brainwashed, and that if they were to right, make the right moves, then obviously they can change a lot. I mean, how much did we change in our ten, in our tens, twenties, and thirties? I'm in forty-two now. I'm probably finished changing much. I still am open to growing and learning. But God, when I was twenty, oh, twenty, or even thirty, I'm nowhere near the person I was then. So don't think you know it all. Uh, you haven't. There are very few people in those protests who, who can accurately describe history. And the propaganda is all hub from Hamas. They take it from their words. But it would be crazy for them not to inflate those numbers, as they know they're having such a positive effect in Europe and the US in, and, and the UK in terms of taking over our kids. They know it's working. Why would they not inflate the numbers? Of course they would. It would be mad not to. That would be the stupidest terrorist plan ever, is not to make make more people come to your cause. And, you know, they, they have no sway. I mean, it, it, the, the most ridiculous things, as I said, well, the Martyrs Day, instead of Veterans Day, that was offensive. The trans... Last Supper at the Olympics that pissed off every Catholic and Christian and, and art lover in the world. That was grotesque. Absolutely grotesque. Um, then you've got the... Actually, I can best define it as this. The, the World Olympic female boxing champion is a man with a penis. That's how crazy things have got. I don't think I can do, do better than that, really. Although there are crazier people out there, but the fact that the female Olympic winner of the boxing is a man with a penis who beat up a whole load of little girls. And they were not saying, not little girls in comparison to his body weight and strength. They were obviously very skilled boxers who should have had a fair fight, but... No, some man much bigger and taller who's still got his penis but just says he identifies as a woman comes along and gets the go. And why would you give them the medal? You know you're going to regret it. Society's going to walk this back. And these sort of things, are, and like Leah Thomas, and Riley Gaines has done the right thing there, but Leah Thomas, I mean, Christ, the size difference between her and Riley Gaines, and she only won by four lengths. He's, he's what? 
be 25 times stronger, faster, and longer than she is. Um, 25%, sorry. So these kids haven't got a clue. They're not going to get one anytime soon. But the way to handle them, if you do have them in your family, I, I have the misfortune of that. Uh, I know other people who do too. Um, if you ever want them to change, you can't affirm any idea they have about gender or anything. To, I mean, sexuality is different if they're gay or, or whatever. That's no one's business. I mean, I would invite every parent to accept every child of it so they're gay. Uh, but, you know, if a child comes back and they've got pronouns, you never use them. Because if you use them, you keep them in, the, in their delusion, they'll never stop. So you start using pet names. And if it's a friend, you just use the word mate or friend or my friend or just something nice, but not using their pronouns. And then you be, you, if you've actually got someone who you really care about and they're sort of trying to come out of this thing, you need to be very stoic in your responses. So when they say strange things, you need to just say, hmm, interesting, something like that. And be very stoic in response you do not want to get into dialogue with them first you want to actually starve them with dialogue uh, in a way so that they they start the dialogue with you and from there you set, start saying you respect their views you respect their boundaries but you've got your own views and boundaries and they need to respect that too and i don't mean they then i mean everybody needs to respect that in this environment um, I'm going to do a video about how to undoctrinate because it, it's to do with hypnosis and it's quite useful. Um, so that will cover that. But the, I just think these protesters are protesting for something they cannot affect. And they are shouting too loudly and they're getting far more violent. And we, I mean, two, two new, uh, Jewish kids were almost beat to death recently. The first death has yet to come, but I think it's coming this year, if not early next year. And after that, I think quite a few more will follow with these protests if they're met with opposing force of people who disagree with them, which is what's happening. So I'll leave it there. Always a pleasure to make these long videos. Please uh, see if you like the the format and leave comments um, in, the, in the box area, all the YouTube jazz, subscribe, like and share if you want to. And I'll be lucky this week and you be good. I'll speak to you soon.